And welcome back, Home Built Helps Tip of the Week. This week, we're going to talk about a somewhat complicated topic based on a question I get all the time. Hey, John, what is the best engine should I be using with my small home built project? Or, hey, John, what type of engine do you have in your aircraft? Unfortunately, these are all the wrong questions to be asking if you're truly interested in picking the best engine for your aircraft. It doesn't matter what I think about an engine, my opinions are just as cloudy as anyone else's. And it doesn't matter what engine is in my aircraft. I like to try them all. And maybe in a future tip, we can talk about the paperwork that is necessary when you change an engine in your aircraft like I have. The objective of this tip is to create an approach or checklist of those items that will help us determine which is the best engine. Not only the type of aircraft, but your personal likes and dislikes are just as important for selecting the best engine. We're going to take a look at four steps that will help you narrow down and focus in on the best engine candidate for your home built project. Step number one, understand the horsepower requirements for the aircraft you're going to build. Get a brochure, get a list of the specifications for your aircraft and find out what the suitable range of horsepower the designer has requested that you use. Now here's one of the big mistakes a lot of builders make. They find an engine they like, check the horsepower, and yeah, it's in the range, so it must be okay. Does horsepower really matter that much? Big mistake. Do you think that an engine producing 80 horsepower at the very bottom of this range is going to make that aircraft perform anywhere near what it could with almost double the horsepower at the opposite end. Choosing the horsepower of your engine is critical. Power is everything with an aircraft. In other words, do you think it matters whether on a hot day your plane is fully loaded and you want to get out of a short strip? You think that 80 horse is going to do it for you? And also take a look at the speed of the aircraft. If you have any desire to approach anywhere near the full speed capability of the aircraft, engines at the lower end of the range are not going to cut it. So it kind of depends on you. What do you expect this aircraft to do? If you want it to just get by, yeah, the engines at the horsepower range at the bottom will make the aircraft fly. But what if you are really unhappy with the performance it's going to get? So in summary, after all of the hard work you've done building your aircraft, you don't want to be disappointed at poor performance because you chose an engine that was a little underpowered. Always aim for the high end of the horsepower range if you can afford it and all other things being equal. Step two. This is very simple. Just make a list of all of the engines that you consider candidates. Now step three. This is where you do your homework. Learn everything you can about these engines and the companies that make them. Go on the web, go to the manufacturer's websites, and learn everything, all the technical specs, the marketing jumbo, make a note on the price for a complete installation, leave no stone unturned. Make notes, make lots of notes. Now you're ready for step four. For each engine that you still have an interest in, you need to contact three builders on the telephone. Which three builders? somebody who is currently flying behind the engine of interest. I'm not talking about contacting a builder that just purchased an engine and it's sitting in a crate on their floor. I'm not even talking about the builder who has installed the engine in his plane 
and any day now he'll go up fine. I'm talking about talking on the phone with three people who currently fly behind that engine. Might not be in the same aircraft you have, but someone who has personal experience and can tell you how the engine flies and you can ask them questions. As long as these are people that are not associated with the vendor or the engine builder, of course they're going to tell you some wonderful things. I'm talking about independent builders who put that engine in their aircraft and are flying with it. They can tell you what they like about it, what they don't like, what type of speeds and performance they get out of it, what type of customer service they got from the factory, what type of maintenance is required, what they paid for it, all sorts of excellent information. You need to do that. Three people now on the phone, not typing through emails and all sorts of stuff like that. You'll know if someone's telling you the truth when you talk to them on the phone. If you're serious about getting a true reflection about what the engine is like, take the effort and find those people. In addition to the four steps we just covered, I have four thoughts to keep in mind while making your engine decision. The first has to do with engines that have gearboxes or propeller speed reduction units versus the engines where the prop hooks directly to the crankshaft, a direct drive. If your aircraft cruises at a speed less than about 100 miles an hour, there's a good chance it's a slow and draggy aircraft. A lot of light sport aircraft fit into this category. This means it can take great advantage of a geared engine. This is because of the generalization that says large prop diameters are more efficient at lower speeds. And a geared engine is very suited for turning these large props which need to be turned slower but require more torque at those low speeds. Think of the helicopter and how that works with its very large blade. So my point can be summarized as follows. If you have a slow and draggy aircraft and you're interested in optimum climb performance, you will have a clear advantage using a geared engine with the appropriate propeller. And that is compared to an equivalent horsepower direct drive engine. It's just physics. Now for my second thought. There are a number of engine builders that appear to have an extremely small operation, maybe just a few employees or contractors that produce their engines. Is this a bad or scary thing? It all depends. Some of you I know would not be caught dead behind an engine that doesn't have a name brand or a long history of accomplishments. And that makes good sense on many levels. But we all must acknowledge that if it wasn't for a couple of guys in a bicycle shop taking risks, we wouldn't have aviation at all. So we're all comfortable with different levels of risk, and that's why there are different engine choices. Some of the best performance and values in small aircraft engines come from very small operations. That's just the way it is. We have choices. What's a good way to feel comfortable with the thought that there might be some additional risk in buying from a smaller vendor? Easy. You're making those three phone calls, right, to pilots and builders that are flying behind those engines. Again, not the guy who has this brother that knows someone down the block who's had an issue with one of these engines talk to people who fly behind them. That's the only way to get to the truth that will help you decide whether the risk is manageable or not. Number three, the cost of an engine is a real genuine constraint. It's kind of like risk. We all have different amounts that we can apply to aviation. You should never break the bank to get your aircraft flying. It's always going to cost even more than you think by the time you are done. Consider buying used. A lot of good deals out there, especially when you can run the engine 
before purchasing it. And everything forward of the firewall, the mount, the cowl, the radiator, propeller, etc., can cost nearly as much as your engine, so be sure to carefully keep track of what is included or not included in the price of the engine. Number four, engine weight. It's amazing the amount of bickering that you see on the internet all about engine weight. This one weighs more than this one, that one is 20 pounds over this one, so that must be a better engine, and all of these concerns and decisions because of a few pounds of engine weight. Of course weight is important in an aircraft. In fact, I love flying alone because the aircraft performs so much differently with all of that weight out of the passenger seat. But if 20 pounds is swaying your decision between one engine or another, I suggest get on the treadmill, lose 20 pounds. Then you don't have to worry about it anymore. Because I bet if you ever gain 20 pounds during the life of your aircraft, you're not gonna throw out that engine and put in the other engines because of that weight penalty. Now I'm going to throw a wild card at you. Yet another option for engine selection includes the engine aftermarket products. There are a number of companies, for example, Edge Performance, that make aftermarket products that soup up the performance of established engines like Rotax and Jabiru. This is a viable method to significantly improve the performance of already reliable engines for a bit more cost and maybe some risk. They're providing turbochargers, fuel injections, cams, larger pistons, and the like to increase power at minimal stress to the base engine. Again, talk to pilots flying behind these engines to get their take on their satisfaction. Well, that's it for our tips on selecting a small aircraft engine. I'm sure I've pissed off some engine vendors and maybe I've made some points that you disagree with. The most important thing though is that we choose an engine that we can live with and be comfortable with and that there are no surprises by the time we hit the sky. Now if you've stuck this long with us on this video, this long video, I want to reward the people who make these videos possible, the patrons. If you happen to have been a patron for the last couple months, I'm going to send you a free copy of our 912 competition DVD title. It is a two DVD set and it includes talks from each of these 10 aircraft engine vendors. I've compiled these all together for the purpose of allowing prospective engine buyers to see what the manufacturer has to say about their engines. It is completely appropriate and valuable if you are searching for an engine. We look forward and thank all of those that support us and make these videos possible. Like I say, if you're already a patron for the last several months at least, simply send me an email and I will send you out as a free gift the 912 competition, which is the title of our video on 10 different engine vendors and what they have to say about their products. You know the drill. Back to building.